Today we're gonna look at more iconic songs that never hits number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Let's do it! Darling, I Wait, what? Thinking Out Loud never you. hits number one? I think this is my favorite to cheer in song, potentially. Baby, my heart could still fall us heart at 23. What beat thinking out loud? What? Oh, Uptown Funk beat thinking out loud. That makes sense. How unlucky to have a song as popular as this at the same time as Uptown Funk is out. That's not okay. 23. Those little facetta flips. And I'm thinking about how people fall in love in a mysterious way. It's dancing reminds me of Dancing with the Stars. I don't know how it is in the US actually. In Sweden, Dancing with the Stars is very much like you have a famous person who's pretty bad at dancing, so he's kind of like standing still most of the time. And then you have a pro dancer just kind of like running circles around you. It kind of looks the same here. Like it's kind of like just a little bit <laughs> just standing. Like she's driving this. Okay, that's impressive. And I just wanna tell you Must have practiced a lot. In October 2015, Thinking Out Loud had gotten over 500 million streams on Spotify, which set a new record for most streams of a single song. However, the song was kept off the top spot of the Hot 100 by Uptown Funk by Mark Ronson and Bruno Mars. So unlucky. Freaking Uptown Funk, man. Here we go. Stay with me. Number two as well. Gotta love the little bird sounds. Yes, it's true, I'm not good at a one-night stand But I still need love cause I'm just a man Your voice is so interesting, it's so light, it's pretty much falsetto or like Head voice, but A tiny, tiny hint of not being falsetto Oh, won't you stay with me Cause you're thought of this before but this is so like play by play doing Adele's thing with like rolling in the deep for example has the same type of kind of weird choirs in the background and the whole ballad thing and the great singer this ain't love, it's clear to see. But darling, stay with me. yeah they just have an unbelievable voice don't they just flexing that i remember that sam smith's pronouns are they slash them <laughs> I deserve your praise! <laughs> Stay With Me spent 21 weeks in the top 10 and 54 weeks on the Billboard Hot 100 in total. 21 weeks in the top 10, that's crazy. It was held off from the top spot by Magic's Rude. Okay, Rude was so massive. Dang, I'm so sad they never had a second as big song as Rude. I thought Magic were incredible. By the way, welcome back to another daily video. My name is Joel from Roomy Official and here's a meme from the subreddit. When the editors torture Joel by making him listen to a song he hates, he begs us with his eyes to say him okay <laughs> that is the i am kidnapped look for sure <laughs> jonas is standing off camera like this <laughs> i won't hurt you if you just listen to this song <laughs> okay number three some nights i call it a draw this was so massive too some nights i wish that my lips could be Castle. How massive are those vocal packages and like the super high falsetto? How high is that? But I still wake up. Yeah, that's a high F. But I still wake up. <laughs> oh, what do I stand for? What do I stand for? There's so many layers going on. It's sick. Oh, 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 oh. This is actually a sick song. I forgot about this. They must have spent so many hours recording those vocals. For most pop songs nowadays, maybe you have like three things to record or something, then maybe you add some extra backing vocals by putting it into Melodyne and dragging it around and just kind of like having a robot backing vocal that you kind of hide a little bit in the mix. This is all like freaking just singing over and over and over. And it shows, it sounds amazing. Some Nights was a sleeper hit, spending approximately seven months on the Billboard Hot 100 before reaching a peak of number three for six non-consecutive weeks, beginning the week of September 29th, 2012. You know that I want you. Oh, bad romance? What beat bad romance? <laughs> they look like anime bad guys in this music video, I gotta say. Is 
that supposed to be in like an insane asylum where like no one in their right mind will have a place that's that white? I guess it is. It seems like it. There's a lot of forcible things going on. Me trying to get a more manly chin. <laughs> it's like a bra. <laughs> Lady Gaga became the first female in British chart history to have three number one singles in one year. Despite being the most viewed video on YouTube 2010, Bad Romance never reached number one. She does have a very European appeal. Not saying that Britain necessarily feels super European. It, I mean, it isn't even anymore. It's not part of the EU, right? I, I guess it is on your Whatever. Let's not get into semantics here, but <laughs> good song. Okay. Number three. For the frame rate, man. You blow my mind. I get it, it's stop motion, but like, it doesn't, doesn't feel right. Your sweet moonbeam. Your sweet moonbeam. I never understood these lyrics, and I, I never will. Like, there's worse lines than that, but just in isolation. Your sweet moonbeam. <laughs> Your sweet perpendicular booty. The dance moves. I can't say anything. I made this video. He's got a very slight Kermit thing going on. Ain't that Mr. Mister? I can't do it very well anymore. I did it for one of my voices videos, but I've totally lost it. Hey Soul Sister was the top selling song on the iTunes store in 2010 and the second overall best selling song in the US in 2010. Okay. The single received a six times platinum certification, signifying sales of over six million copies, and they still didn't hit number one. That is insane. It just seems like if you make old style music and for some reason the song is big, you get everyone parents going you get the kids going you get everyone going that is the whole Ed Sheeran method right it's crazy we just had a goal, <laughs> talking about your Lambos. okay this number two Lambo. I mean to be honest like I'm not the hugest fan of this song so even that it hit number two feels crazy to me I don't think of this as that iconic maybe you guys disagree let me know in the comments hit the strip club we be letting fans go everybody hate who we just call them fans though in love with the money I ain't never He's totally like, yeah, I don't have the time to put on my t-shirt. However, I have time to put on my two chains and my bandana. <laughs> You're not saving that much time, dude. Just put on the shirt as well. Oh, you had a shirt here. What happened? Is there like a story to this music video on how he lost his shirt? Tribe Queen was named one of the best songs of 2014 in the Huffington Post and Vice Magazine's Noisy blog, with the latter publication calling it the hottest New York record of the year. Beating Trap Queen for the top position was See You Again by Charlie Puth and Wiz Khalifa. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, that's that old Trap Queen? It feels way more recent than See You Again. By the way, did you know that we have merch? This merch, for example, it's a little bit pitchy merch. Get it for when things are pitchy. We also have this merch and this merch. Get it now. Link in the description. I'ma take this back. Oh. This is so iconic. That is crazy. Number 12. Must have sold more over time then, I guess. It's getting dark, too dark to see. Who's the other guy? Like As a drummer, it always irks me. Well, it doesn't irk me, but it's fun to see like people who play the snare drum like that. They're holding the drumstick like freaking, I don't know, like like this. I used to practice that a little bit. It's super weird. A lot of jazz drummers do it and like drummers who want to be fancy. All right, just hold it normal. <laughs> I don't know why that bothers me. I wish I would have been at that concert, actually. That looks really cool. Bob Dylan have won a Nobel Prize, but he's never had a number one song on the Hot 100. Never? Knocking on Heaven's Door became one of Dylan's most popular and most covered post-1960s compositions, spawning covers from Guns N' Roses, Eric Clapton, Randy Crawford, and more. He never had a number one song, but he got a Nobel Prize. Well, you know... <laughs> Which one would you rather want? A Nobel Prize or, you know, being on the Hot 100 like a bajillion people have been. Oh, this is the most iconic song of all time in a lot of polls. And it just hit number six. I'm sure this still sells really well and like gets a lot of streams. How many streams does that have on Spotify? Yeah, 920 mil. Wow, they still have a lot of fans listening to their stuff.
It just is the most iconic song. That's vocals. Kurt Cobain, man. I just got a memory back from when I was like 15 or 14. I don't know, I was just doing my thing. I was just joking around. And some acquaintance of mine walked up to me and said that like, Smells Like Teen Spirit is about people like you. And I didn't really know what Smells Like Teen Spirit was about, but he said it like it was a diss. So now I kind of want to understand the lyrics better. Smells like teen spirit. Okay, so someone says here, Kurt uses the line to mock his fans' attitude. Teen spirit ends up being a bunch of teenage fans that expect to be entertained. Kurt feels the pressure of his demand and he's cynical about the selfish desires that underlie fandom. Maybe that's me then. I wanted to be entertained. Oh, how could I want to be entertained? I'm so ashamed of myself. Nirvana smells like Teen Spirit, despite its worldwide success, never reached higher than number six on the Billboard Hot 100. The song has over 1 billion views on YouTube and almost a billion streams on Spotify. Wow. wow. Yeah, it's, it's a crazy popular song. That is insane. For what? I don't know now. Oh, number 20. Time I plant a seed. We talked about what these lyrics are about in this video. It's pretty weird. This is so iconic. What makes this song iconic then if it was not that popular? It's just like people talk about it, I guess. It's a pretty edgy title. I feel like everyone's heard it. Maybe people just don't like to repeat it over and over or buy it. But I didn't shoot no so Eric Clapton did a cover of this song. Clapton's version performed better on the charts than the original, making it his first and only number one song on the Billboard Hot 100. Oh, Eric Clapton got the number one. That is like the nightmare. That is like the whole Elvis oh. thing and everything about like just a white guy coming in and covering a song and it doing better. That's a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, Lean On. Wasn't this one of the biggest songs that year? This is one with all the awkward dance moves. <laughs> I don't really know what they're trying to do. Like, what is... What's the aesthetic they're going for? Indian? She's, like, obviously not Indian, right? Is the dancing awkward on purpose in this? Like, is it supposed to be, like, a, you know, a shoot post? I mean, this dancing, obviously, is just... I don't know, they just seem to take themselves so seriously. She sounds like she's supposed to make this noise when she dances. Like, like. <laughs> Major Lazer's Lean On was one of the best selling singles of 2015 and is now one of the biggest songs of all time. Oof. But only got to number four on the charts, missing out to Jason Derulo's Want to Want Me. That is a banger though. Sadly, that didn't stand the test of time, I guess, but I think Want to Want Me is a freaking banger. And tight. Singles are sweating so fast in my white tape. Okay. Number eight. The pants. Gotta love it. <laughs> oh, that is actually a sick little drop, kind of. I kind of want to be able to dance like this. This is considered to be MC Hammer's signature song and his most successful single. Because the song was not initially released as a single, listeners had to purchase the album, which as a result went on to sell more than 18 million copies, gaining multi-platinum certifications from the RIAA as well as in other countries. Okay, that explains why you wouldn't hit like the Billboard Hot 100. But he probably earned a lot more money from selling albums instead of singles. So good on you, Mr. Hammer. Oh, this is also one of the biggest ones of all time. Number two? What was number one? It must have been something that went away really quickly. Right? Ryan Tedder's got a great voice. I have a feeling he's about as much of a fridge as I am. His dancing here is like, if those are the best parts that they cut out in the music video, imagine what the bad ones were like. This is like, again, you can watch my dance video. I am terrible. I, I really cannot move at all, but I also don't think he can. <laughs> they probably shot like five hours worth of footage. 
Shining Stars sold over 5.3 million copies in the US as of December 2014. The song spent 25 consecutive weeks in the top 10 and finished fifth for the most total weeks on the Hot 100 after spending 68 weeks on the chart. Wow. The number one song at the time was Timber by Pitbull and Kesha. No, that is unfair. Oh, I mean, that is probably Pitbull's best song, but come on, man. It's going down. Oh, yeah, and Timber. You better move, you better dance, let's make a night We won't remember <laughs> ah. Wait, what? Eddie Murphy? I'm not sure I've heard this Am I an idiot right now? Is it my girl want to party all the time? Was he actually an artist or is this like from the movie? Oh yeah, it is this one. Party All The Time was recorded at Rick James's home studio in Buffalo, New York. It reached number two on the Billboard Hot 100 for three weeks behind Say You, Say Me by Lionel Richie. To be fair, a better song. <laughs> Rick James also provided vocals for the song. Did Eddie Murphy sing? I guess he did. Uh, Party All The Time. Was that really the original? I guess it was. That is crazy. So confused. It seems like it was his original song though. That's awesome. Crashing. Oh. This is also one of the most viewed songs of all time. Only number three. I think the vocals on this are good. To be fair, a lot of people always say that the Chainsmokers, like all their songs sound the same. This is not super close to closer, <laughs> close to closer. It's got a very different vibe and like, I think the drop is different. I think they did a good job with this. Like they are good producers and like musicians. Don't let me down. Oh, they're showing off their car. Don't let me down, down. Was that a way to like make them not have to dance? I don't know what's happening in that music video and I like it too much to figure it out. It spent 23 weeks in the top 10 and it was later named the 8th best performing single of the year by Billboard. Don't Let Me Down became both the Chainsmokers and Daya's first top 5 single on the US Billboard Hot 100. Okay. Cool. Okay guys, can you care for more music comment our videos? Can you care for music VS videos? Here's a meme from the subreddit. Lil Pitchy's Living For That reached 3 million plays on Spotify. Congratulations to Lil Pitchy. I'm so happy for you, Lil Pitchy. You're pretty cool. Check out Lil Pitchy if you haven't already. He's releasing new music very soon. Follow Lil Pitchy on Spotify or wherever you like to listen to music. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye guys.